How many Ricoh GRs I own? I guess I have all the ones I need for my street photography, right? So obviously the GR3X is my favorite one. I love it. Then I also have a GR3X backup camera. Shout out to Thomas from Square Hood. Uh, then I also have a GR3, obviously, because I need 28 sometimes. And then recently I also added this one to the kit and this one. These two are called the GR3 and GR3X HDF versions. And uh, it's Rico's new sh It's what everyone is getting at the moment. Or maybe after this video, I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, obviously this is going to be about uh, this new expansion model from Ricoh. This is uh, called, as I said, the Ricoh GR3 and 3X HDF. And uh, what the hell is HDF even? If you haven't seen it yet on the Ricoh GR Photography channel, I made a proper official introduction video where I go more into the differences between the regular model and all that stuff. So check that out if you want to see an objective view of this camera. And in this video, I'm going to share my personal opinion, my experience using these cameras, because I've been using them since uh, last year, December. So I think I have a little bit to say about this camera. And I also want to go deep into how it feels to use them and how this model did change my photography or let's say influenced the way I shoot. So let's do that in this video. Let's go. Yeah, you can have your Rico back. <laughs> So these are actually mine. Uh, this, is, uh, this was given to me by Rico for this review. So I don't get to keep these two, but these are my uh, cameras. To share with you my reaction I had when Rico told me about this new expansion model. So one day they uh, sent me an email and said, you know, we want to talk about a new product that is launching soon. Do you have a minute to talk about it? And I got very excited, of course, because in my mind I was like, oh, GR4, GR4, let's do it. Then we had the call and when Rico explained to me that the model name is going to be HDF, my face went from this to, uh? so basically I was very confused. I was like, what? What does HDF mean? And my hopes were kind of going, going somewhere because it didn't sound like we are about to talk about a successor of the GS3. So initially I was a little bit disappointed, of course, like maybe some of you are. At the same time, I was curious, like, okay, what, what is the reasoning behind this? Why is Rico coming out with another seemingly minor update? And the way they explained it to me is that this is not a special edition, this is not um, a different color, right? The only thing that's different is the shutter button. It's a little bit gray. You know, it's not black anymore, it's gray, which uh, some might find very attractive and cool. I think it's cool, but it doesn't really make a difference to me. <laughs> okay, David, David thinks it's cool. But the main selling point is that these two cameras have a new filter in them. So the regular GS3 and GS3X, they have an ND filter, a physical ND filter behind the lens. So what Rico did is they replaced the ND filter of the GS3 and GS3X and replaced it with a black mist filter. So a diffusion filter. And that, that's why it's called HDF because HDF stands for Highlight Diffusion Filter. Sounds very technical, but uh, basically a diffusion filter is uh, something that a lot of filmmakers love to use because you can make digital images look a little bit more film-like, more organic. And actually right now I'm filming with a, a glimmer glass a diffusion filter from Tiffin on my video camera. So, so this is with a diffusion filter and this is without. Do we look sharper, more contrasty, more digital? Now this is a glimmer glass filter. This is not what's inside this camera, but I think you get the point. So diffusion filters are useful if you want to alter the look and feel, the atmosphere of an image uh, in camera. And there's an argument that you could make that, hey, can we not do this in post? And I would say maybe there are some filters and presets that mimic this effect, but I think an, an actual physical filter does only affect, you know, the the necessary parts or the, for example, a diffusion filter does mostly affect the highlights and not so much the shadows or, or midtones. 
So I don't know if this is possible to create in post. Ja, bei yeah. Scatterbox, es gibt ja verschiedene Tiffenfilter, du kannst yeah. sowohl die Post mm -hmm. lassen. So David just uh, told me uh, about uh, what's called Scatterbox. Scatterbox. Okay, so there's a product from Video Village, or it's called Scatterbox. It's a plugin for DaVinci Resolve, the editing program. It's supposed to mimic several Tiffin filters and it does actually do a great job, to be honest. When I see the example images, they look almost uh, the same as a physical filter. But the point is <laughs> that this filter is inter integrated into the camera and if you want to use the JPEGs out of camera, you already have this effect. And the software is like 500 euro for a lifetime plan or like 100 bucks for three months. So it's, it's quite expensive. Okay, so this is basically what Rico did. So when they explained it to me and they showed me example, uh, sample photos, um, they would emphasize or highlight that they want people to use this camera to widen their expression with photography. So uh, they were showing me a graph, you know, there was Saul Leiter here and there was some uh, Alex Webb and there was some contrasty photographer here and then there was someone with, uh, with very soft images. And they would say, you know, we have cameras for these types of images, but it would be cool to have a camera that uh, can make this kind of images. More like film, you know, more analog, more, more soft. And then the more I heard them talking about it, I was curious how this might affect uh, the kind of images I would take with these cameras. Because these filters are not new to me. I use them for video, but I also have used them for photography. When I used it for photography, I liked it a lot, especially at uh, night. It gives you, you know, this highlight blooming and uh, it can be very pretty. But at the same time, sometimes I didn't want to have this uh, effect. And then I would always have to unscrew the filter, right? And with the GR3 and 3X, you have to use an adapter. So you have to take the filter off and on if you want to use this effect. But now you can all do this with a click of a button. There's actually an HDF button here, a dedicated button. Uh, which is, uh, you can customize it, you can use it as a regular FN button. This is kind of trippy when you see it for the first time, you can see the effect going on and off. Uh, I think it's also unique to have a model that has different special specialties it can fulfill or is targeted to special, a specific kind of imagery. If you are a portrait photographer, you know, or you like night photography and you want a little bit of an organic look, then this, this might be very attractive to you. I know a lot of people use diffusion filters for photography. It's kind of popular right now. I always see videos of people using, uh, you know, diffusion filters on their Fujis and other cameras. Oh, there's one huge benefit of having the filter in integrated into the camera. I hope I can show it here on camera, but especially on the GR. Because you have to use an extension tube, an adapter, the filter is, you know, in front of the lens. So if you have a light source, for example, uh, a street lamp, you have to move the camera around to hide the reflection of the light, which is very annoying and sometimes hard to get rid of. Maybe you have to use a little bit of Photoshop. But because this filter is behind the lens, you don't have to worry about reflections and lens flares. So that's kind of a plus point, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> and then there are other things, you know, I've used this in the snow and uh, at very bright uh, days and uh, it's actually great for black and white and I will talk a little bit more about that later. But let's go, take some photos and I'll see you at the next location. Bye. So this is actually a perfect location to show you the HDF effect. So I'm going to take one without. And now, filter is on with the press of a button. So I just noticed um, this effect is kind of cool when you take photos of sparkly things, you know. We have some watches here that are very shiny, silver, gold, and it adds a little bit of bling bling. <laughs> Pretending to walk towards the camera, take two. 
Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about when to use this HDF version. So, <laughs> yeah, when it rains. No, uh, actually, yes, but first I want to say when I first got this camera from Ricoh, it was uh, Christmas season, you know. I went out to all the Christmas markets. I was looking for bright lights, colorful lights. And that was fun, that was definitely fun. Um, and I got some photos that I really like, especially when you have very strong backlight, that's when this um, HDF version really shines. And especially in monochrome. I think it works quite well with monochrome images. But after a while I got a little tired of night photography and also the effect is quite strong at night. Uh, I think Rico is saying that it has a strength between 1 and 5. If you're not familiar with diffusion uh, filters, usually 1 is pretty low and then 5 is pretty high, so it has a wide range. And in my experience it does, it does come close to 1 to 5. Because sometimes you don't even notice the effect and sometimes the effect is too much. But where I really like to use this model is monochrome, cloudy, overcast days, rain like today, a little bit of lights. That's when it works really well in uh, black and white. So um, yeah, I like it a lot for moody, cloudy, dark days here in Hamburg, which is 80% uh, of the year looks like this. So maybe this camera is made for Hamburg photographers. What I also noticed is that uh, highlights, like blown out highlights in the frame do look very nice uh, when you use this HDF version. Without it, it looks, um, you know, the contrast is so high and it looks, it looks like the exposure is wrong. But with the HDF filter, because it has a very nice transition from the highlight area to the shadow area, you can kind of forgive when an image is overexposed. So I find myself overexposing my black and white shots more often because it does, doesn't look wrong when I use this HDF version. Yeah. This is a diffusion filter. <laughs> Condensation is the best diffusion filter. Okay, so we took ecstasy. Come on, look how it looks. Yeah, it's awesome. Diffusion filter Rico GR Together forever I make your images look cinematic And all you need to do Is press my button and it's magic Hey, hey, are you listening? Are you browsing Rico rumor sites again? How many times do I have to tell you to wait? It drives me crazy. I don't want to see it anymore. Rico GR4, your dream, your love. How can you do this to me? I make all your images look cinematic. Isn't that fantastic? No, no. If you can love me for who I am, then just go and don't come back no more. No, no. So now that the sun has come out, I think it's time to share my thoughts about the GS3 and GS3 X HDF. So yeah, I was a little disappointed when Rico told me about this model. And of course, I would have loved to see a GR4. Um, but I had a lot of fun using these cameras. And I know now that this HDF model is not necessarily my go-to Rico GR. It's really nice having the option to turn it on and off. I mean, the HDF effect, which can be very handy. And there were some instances where I didn't have the HDF on and I wanted it on. So I, just, I was able to just press a button and then uh, get this effect. And for me, it comes down to what I want to photograph. You know, if I want to photograph images that have a nostalgic atmosphere, then yeah, H, this HDF filter does help. So if you're someone who really likes to use the JPEGs for social media or 
for quick sharing it with your family members, for example, then this HGF effect is pretty cool because if you're into, you know, creating your own color recipes, um, which a lot of people do with these cameras, then you can get images that you only can get if you spend a lot of time editing. I also really like it with the negative film simulation recipe, image control, filter. How do we call these looks? Rico just calls them image control, but doesn't sound as fancy as film simulations. <laughs> Yeah, the negative film uh, filter is really nice and I really like it to use it together with this HDF filter because it really does make images look more analog and film-like. Yeah, which is kind of nice. And I think we should applaud Rico for at least trying something new and innovate because this is something I never seen in any other camera before. Having a physical filter built in, an effect filter, diffusion filter. Which makes me wonder, you know, what else could we do? I know this is not really a successor to the Ricoh GS3 and the 3X, but it gives you something unique that no other camera manufacturer is doing at the moment. And I personally don't like to use filters in front of the lens. It's kind of annoying, you know, and then the camera gets bigger. And, um, you know, I still do that sometimes, but mostly to protect the lens. But I don't want to be stuck with, with a certain effect on my camera. So it's kind of nice to, have, to be able to turn it off and on in this HDF model. Oh, the sun is bright. I shouldn't complain. <laughs> so I forgot to mention that there are two new features coming with these expansion models. And I'm not going to talk about them in this video because they're also coming via firmware update to all existing GRs. And I think I did a very good job explaining these features on the Ricoh GR Photography channel. So check out that video uh, to know more about these extra features. I really wanted to focus on the HDF filter and show you how it looks and feels like. And I hope I was able to demonstrate that with this video. Yeah, and there's not much else I can say other than uh, thank you Rico for letting me uh, play with these two new cameras. I had a lot of fun. Um, if I wouldn't already have so many GRs, I would probably consider buying an HDF version because I don't really use the ND filter. But personally, I don't need uh, this effect for my, for my photography. I can imagine that I would use it for certain projects, maybe do a winter street photography project, then you know this could be awesome for that. But yeah, if I wouldn't have any GRs already, I would probably buy this one because it gives me something extra that the ND filter version isn't really giving me personally. I guess that's it. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. Wait, there's more. Did him did him did him Rico GR4! <laughs> I'm joking guys of course and you know I'm as unpatient as you guys are I really want to see a new model but but I think more importantly I want Rico to take all the time that they need I don't want them to come out with a camera because they feel the need they need to deliver then all we get is just a spec bump you know let the Apple and Sony's of this world waste our resources you know what I mean I'm not really in need for an upgrade right now because you know I still use these cameras daily and I create work I'm working on an exhibition right now and you know the prints look beautiful so I don't really feel like I'm lacking anything but that's just my opinion you know I, I can wait Rico take your time and come out with something that blows our minds <laughs> but no pressure so yeah keep enjoying photography keep shooting and i see you soon how soon i don't know but soon <laughs>